Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Give me about two seconds. I'm just kind of cleaning up some things. We're getting settled. Settling in. And guys, uh, if you could just type in and let me know if the audio is coming in. That would be huge. Huge. Hey, Isabel. Dun, dun, dun. Guys, just two seconds. We're just getting settled up. Uh, we're in the freaking jungle over here, so the internet is a little bit shady. Stand back, stand back. Is that Stevie Nicks in the background? Turn all this junk off. All right, all right. Good, 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 good. Thank you, folks. All right, Cam, let's get this thing moving. Hold on, folks. Let's do it. Dun, 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 dun. Your time. We just got to our new pad, so we... Did we just get in today? Yeah. I think so. We gotta sit outside because, as you know, there's not very much air conditioning in Costa Rica. Dun, 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 dun. Get a little closer here. Stand back, stand back. Double brew. Double brew. Well, I figured you'd want one. I most definitely need one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, rock and roll. So, folks, um, welcome to Path to Profitability, round two with uh, my good friend here, Cameron. Round dose. Round dose. So we have been um, cruising around in Costa Rica for the last, I don't know, 10 days or so, uh, trading and working and doing all sorts of uh, shenanigans. But uh, we wanted to do another webinar to uh, finish up what we were talking about in the previous webinars and uh, also go into just a, a few more types of setups and things that we're working on in the market. Uh, Cameron had a pretty big day, our first day in Costa Rica. He made 10 Gs um, on a whole host of uh, dirty little gold stocks. Dirty and, oil plays. And and oil plays. On dirty oil plays. And uh, it was pretty cool. So. Day one, uh, he paid for basically our whole trip. You know, the villa we're in is like a thousand bucks a day, but uh, he nailed it. Our first day, he's like, I got equipment. We just paid for the whole trip. And <laughs> just it was, stop on the head here. <laughs> and it was, uh, it was pretty exciting. So that's like kind of the cool part of, you know, uh, working for yourself is I used to be like uh, when I would take vacation, I'd be like, oh, man, if I take a day off, then I'm gonna miss out on trading profits and I gotta pay for this webinar. But um, in this particular case, you know, if you can keep up your work, uh, you can pay for your vacation. So it's we've been, been working, uh, working our asses off out here, really. Yeah, we've been, we've been working, working our butts up. So I learned a lot of different things uh, from Cameron uh, this week, but why don't you, uh, Cam, uh, go into kind of, so <clears throat> the type of setups that you're trading. So you had a big day, these were swing positions. So Cameron is a little bit different than me. Uh, I'm primarily a day trader. He made his profits um, on these. These were overnight holes. Yeah, there are some trades. So give us an idea. Give us a rundown of what was going on on these swings. Uh, basically, I've been watching the oil and gold a lot because uh, they both been beaten down quite a bit. So I've been playing these two, two stocks, EXXI and HK. Uh, I actually traded them several times this week for uh, small losses because I keep thinking that oil is going to eventually bounce. Um, but we did have a nice bounce uh, when I did trade EXXI and HK on, uh, in addition to AMD, which is a small gold stock that's about a dollar per share. Uh, but basically, 
Both those stocks had about 15 to 20 percent rips uh, as oil did have a big day uh, squeezing there. So I was basically just trying to call the bottom on them, and uh, I hit it right and I came out on top. I sold right at the top of uh, that just short term rally. You know, oil the next two days dropped about three percent that one day. Yeah. So you know, it's always important that you're at least locking in partial gains. Uh, and even more importantly, you know, if I would have not taken those profits, I'd be at a loss in those positions right now. So you have to be extremely disciplined with taking profits in addition to you know cutting your loss short if it doesn't work out. So um, guys, why it's really important, especially with oil and gold plays, um, to continuously scale out or take profits is that when you trade stocks that basically move uh, as a function of an underlying commodity like gold or oil, there's gaps everywhere because gold and oil trade all over the world 24 hours a day. So they are crazy gapping and because they're both in downtrends, the path of least resistance for these type of stocks is lower as they're both in heavy, heavy downtrends. Now you can catch using very particular timing techniques and it could be very profitable. You can catch the counter trend rips in these type of stocks, but it's really important to take them because nobody can ever really time the exact bottom of anything. You never know. You can only take a basically a educated guess and manage your risk. You manage your risk. So you've got to take your profits because if you're looking at like uh, the long term charts in gold and oil, right? They've been just totally wrecked, but they're both really oversold. So you can play the counter trend bounce, but that's just all it is. It's a counter trend bounce. You know. Very, very few people can pick an exact bottom. It's easy to take the counter trend bounce um, as you have certain signals that you look for. So when you are looking for something that's going to bounce or that's oversold and extended, like what 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 setup is that? Like what kind of action are you looking for? Uh, I mean, basically, I'm just looking at USO uh, and GLD and kind of following the charts, and then I look at those stocks and it's for those basically indexes that I see that they're so oversold and then I go look at uh, small cap plays in that sector. Uh, they're potentially forming up bottom patterns uh, and I kind of time my entries all based on intraday, intraday charts um, and basically intraday breakout patterns that happen typically in the morning, which is what I call an F1, any kind of breakout pattern that happens on a one minute chart within the first two hours of the opening. So I try to trade that opening breakout and uh, we hit it really big on uh, Friday and Monday, but I got also trying to trade those breakouts uh, Tuesday through Friday on those same plays, and they didn't work out. But I had to manage my risk, so I took a little bit of a loss on those ones. But I'm still up, you know, pretty heavily uh, just from making it big on that first trade on Monday. So you just have to manage your risk, and when it doesn't work out, it's the upside. So guys, that's really important to understand is that um, if you talk to like really any of the traders that I really respect, uh, whether it's Cameron or like um, John Well, sure. Uh, even Mary Beth is very similar like that. Uh, they all bat basically 50%. You know, very few people get a, a higher than that. But the way they make money is that, you know, when they hit their setup, they're going to get a huge, huge gain. And in between that, they may take a bunch of small little losses. But when they find the right setup, they hammer it with big size and they take that big gain. So that's what Cameron did this week was, you know, he had – one really hot day where he took a huge ripper, and then uh, every other day he actually lost. You know, he lost 500 bucks or 800 bucks, and so probably over the course of the week, you know, the four days totaled up to a couple thousand bucks in losses, but then he had one big day where, you know, he made 10 grand, and so net overall for the week, he had a really great week, but it was really just about managing uh, risk. Day, because, yeah, because it didn't work out, and actually got stocked out of these plays on I mean, Friday it was, then they ripped back uh, the upside. So I still think these plays, EXXI, GDP, which yep. we both played on Friday, I think it was, as well as HK, I think all these plays uh, have potential, but it's all dependent on oil. So it's kind of difficult when you're playing commodity stocks because they're so closely related to what that commodity is doing. If the charts, even if the chart has a nice setup and all of a sudden oil breaks down, that's going to you know ruin the chart there. So it's really dependent on if oil bounces, but if it does bounce, uh, we're going to see these plays and make a big rip to the upside as well. Let me ask you a question because this is probably you work out of the house alone. I work out of the house alone. Uh, Robert is with us. He works out of the house alone. So while you're having these losing days and we're all trading together, were you getting mad watching me just <laughs> rip it every day? 
Yeah, and I, I was, was like straight up. Way. I was just straight <laughs> up crushing it for a few days. I was sitting here trying to freaking trade these uh, breakouts again on these oil stocks, and they were just not working out. And I have them all over here screaming, "Long, blah, 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 long, blah, 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 stock X Y Z ripping." I'm just like, mother. Effort here, and so, uh, but yeah, you know, it, it definitely makes it a little more entertaining uh, when I'm just sitting around on a table just with a group of traders. Yeah, you know, sitting at home by myself, I can be just sitting there, for, you know, two hours and just so bored. All I want to do is go take a nap, especially if it's a boring market. If it's a hot market and you're making money, it's you know, even if you're by yourself, it's fun. Uh, but sure. if it, uh, trading with you and Robert here, it's been a, a great experience, just increasing the fun factor of. Rather than sitting at home. So this week, Cameron is really focused on oils. And for those of you guys that know me, I'm like hyperactive, over trader, day trader style. So it's earnings season right now, which is like my heyday. I absolutely love earnings season. So every day, you know, I'm running scans for stocks that are making, um, you know, really, really good earnings. So you can use something like uh, the stockmarketwatch.com. I use trade ideas. And it'll tell me all the earnings gappers. Trade ideas is a software uh, that works pretty well. And it'll tell me all the earnings gappers and stocks that are making um, earnings moves. And so I put those on a list and I filter through them and I browse through all the stocks in the daily charts. And then I'll have every day kind of some stocks that are making these moves on earnings. And I'll play them over and over over the course of a, a, a few days. And so this happened to be the t my time of the you know year. It's just ripping it. All so day I was long. ripping it all day. And I could <laughs> see him like looking at me and then like come back to his computer <laughs> and like looking at me and go back to his computer. And so I felt bad about my games because <laughs> he was getting mad at me. Well, see, we're, we're two completely different kind of traders. Like me, like I'll be trading for this the first hour or two and then I typically never trade yep. yesterday. So I'm seeing you trade all these stocks and you're just sitting there tempting me to trade because I'm like, I, I had FOMO, you're missing out, like, yep. there's all this stuff going on. But even a lot of the patterns you're playing, you know, I look at those and I'm like, like I said, it's like, ah, it's, it's not clean. It's not now as, uh, what stock? We, I said VGGL. That at, so I said that at about 250 and it closed about $4 that day. So. We were looking at VGGL. So that was a stock that went up 130%, I believe it was on um, Thursday. And VGGL, I asked Cam, I'm like, what do you think of this, man? I think this 250 is a huge breakout. And he's like, you know, it's not clean. So I'm like, all right, all right, it's not clean. And then it goes up. And I'm like, mother, mother fudger. If Cam wasn't here right now, I'd be So ready. then I, all day, I'm like, is it clean now? Is it clean now? And then at 350, I'm like, is it clean? And then all day, like, we just saw it go up and up and up. And I was, just sick with myself uh, for not taking the trade. I actually had it. I had it at 245 and 249, and I just sold it flat, and then uh, it literally broke out like you know 20 minutes later. But um, you know, what, what can you do? But I think that's that's, a, that's really an important thing because um, I noticed this uh, causes new traders to lose a lot, like what me and Cam were talking about. Uh, I noticed this in my hedge fund. Uh, where we have 200 traders, uh, Cameron's got 50 students of his in the hedge fund, and um, it's an expectations game, which is that people are always comparing themselves to other people. They see somebody on Twitter saying they made 15,000 or 10,000, or you see some guru say he made 2,000 or whatever, and you're up 200, 300 bucks, but you want more because you have this expectations. You're seeing other people do it, and you're comparing yourself to other people. And that can get you in a really, really big rut, and you can get a lot of losses. You know, I did a study in our hedge fund that 90% of the traders at any given point during the day are up at least a couple hundred bucks, yet not 90% of them are profitable. So they're giving it back. Why is that? Because when I talk to my guys, and I always call them up when they give back profits or – you know, if I have a particular student I have some interest in, I say, hey, man, what happened? Like, you gave back all your profits. And it's like, oh, well, you know, like, I, I saw this guy doing this, and this stock was doing this, and so they want more. They try and, to set their goals too high. Like, a lot of people will come into my chat room or email me or Robert and say, like, you know, how much should I expect to make in a month as a trader? Like, that you can't. You can't set expectations. Zero. Yeah, you, you just, can expect nothing. Yeah, it's just you either make it or you don't, and you can't set. You just really can't set expectations. It's just 
the trades come or they don't, you just manage your risk as best as possible. And yeah, you can't compare stuff to other people also because if you think about it, like, I've been doing this for 14 years, I have blown up like five trading accounts. It took me five years to actually get good at trading. I lost from the ages of 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21, to 22, to 23. And I finally met Paul and I got better. Uh, but it was a, a big, long period of time. So I experienced literally just loss after loss and all sorts of bad habits before you know I was able to start making consistent income. But comparing yourself to others will get you in a lot of mess. And my buddy, um, you guys probably know my Sang Lucci. You know, Sang Lucci is a, a good friend of mine. He owns a hedge fund. He trades millions of dollars. So when I went to New York with him, he makes fun of me because I trade a much smaller yeah, account. Yeah. So he says, oh, man, you, you still – you still fudging around with your six-figure account, huh? <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, because he's moving around millions yeah, of dollars. Yeah. So when I was there, like, I wanted to trade. I was trading all this size. And I was, like, literally crapping my pants because he egged me on, and I wanted to have, like, this huge, like, $30,000 day. Yeah, yeah. And I instead, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I, you know, it just doesn't work for me that what he does – and uh, I just wanted to do it because he was egging me up. Yeah, because it's, it's distracting. <laughs> like, like I said, being trading here with you has been uh, a distraction for me because I'm tempted to trade more than I usually do yep. because I see you trade. So I'm comparing myself to you just like you're saying uh, when that's maybe not normally what I would do if I'm kind of in my own element. So that's a great example of trying to compare yourself to others, you know, basically fear of missing out, kind of like you can all trade these stocks that I normally wouldn't even trade because this is not my strategy. Uh, and so it's, you know, can be a distraction. You can just, you just have to, you know, basically find the niche that works for you and stick to that rather than having all these other distractions. You know, I don't try to look at, you know, people go look at all these different forums or the chat rooms and Twitter stuff. I try to keep, you know, my head out of any other, uh, you know, stock calls or trading forums or anything like that, because it's just a distraction to what I know works for me. Uh, so I stick to my own niche and that's what's, uh, you know, maybe money over the years. Every time I stray away from that and try something else, that's when I start losing money uh, and yep. just unnecessary losses. FOMO is uh, probably the thing that to this day causes me um, causes me losses. FOMO, for you guys that don't know, is a fear of missing out. So uh, all traders have it, and, and the ability to control it is really one of the big uh, predictors of your success because you see all these stocks flying around and you want to be an in them. Not because it might be the right move, it's just because you don't want to miss like the monster run. And that can cause huge losses. You know, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I was trading this stock at VPCO. It yeah. ran from like $2 to $4. And the last day that it was going, um, I was thinking I wanted to short it in the fours at some point. Mm -hmm. And I had this pl game plan from the morning I woke up. I'm like, this stock, if it gets near four, it's going to be an epic short. And instead, because it was flying around so much, I ended up longing it um, because it was <laughs> flying. And I didn't want to miss the big move. Your plans. So I changed my plans. And then it moved down just like a little bit. And I go, oh, my gosh, my short's going to work. So I sold my long, and I went short. And then the stock started going up. So I covered my short, <laughs> and I went long. And then the stock just cratered um, yes. at 380, yes. and it did what exactly what I want. But in between there, I was stuck in uh, the spin cycle because the stock was moving, and I had a fear of missing out on a, a big move, and I didn't stick to my game plan. So I got stuck in the spin cycle, which the spin cycle is when you buy a stock, then you, then you sell it, basically, early. You sell it on support because – you know, you got scared or it's not working. And then it starts to go up, so you rebuy it. And then it takes down a little bit and you sell it. And then maybe you short it even. And then it starts to bounce and you cover it and you long it. And I have this history of, uh, I don't do it as much as I used to, but I still about, you know, once a month or so, I get caught in that spin cycle. And it's like literally, you're just taking like $300, $400 losses. That's but, all I did all week on HK and EXXI after I made that big win on Monday. I just did the spin cycle of continue to try to hit this balance. It hasn't even made a big move up or down. Yep. It's just these choppy moves up and down that I, it doesn't make that run. And I sell it for a loss or it goes back down and I buy it again. And I sell it for a small loss. So I'm stuck in the spin cycle right now, but I'm still trying to play these. But I'm just trying to manage my risk as well. But it's just a pain in the ass. You got to... 
Yeah, the spin cycle is deadly, man. All those, especially when you're doing it in the same stock, over and over and over, it means that you don't have a plan. And so if you don't have a plan and you're stuck in the spin cycle, all those $300, $400 losses before you know it, they add up to $2,000 and you're at your max loss for the day. So for like me, uh, I put a max loss on my account so I don't get myself in trouble. So it automatically closes my account uh, at $2,000. So I can't lose more than that or I won't be able to trade. And literally when I was stuck in the spin cycle, I was just getting nicked like $200, $300 at a time. And before you knew it, like I was at the max loss and I really hadn't traded anything and I was only losing like four <laughs> or five cents every time on the yeah, stupid yeah. stock, but it just added up. And I noticed that um, all, so many new people do that because of the fear of missing out. You know, they just, it hurts them to miss a move more than it actually hurts them to take a loss. Yeah, you know, it's stressful to watch a bit of that you miss or if you just even miss your entry by a couple cents and you're sitting there watching like, even these same stupid oil plays that I've been playing all week, they ripped back in the close, and I, we were traveling at the time, so I didn't have a chance to really buy back in. And now, since they're kind of up a little higher, I'm a little bit nervous about actually buying into the opens on mm -hmm. money because every every breakout I've bought since Monday has been a failed breakout. So I'm a little hesitant about buying it again, but this might actually be the spot point where these stocks actually go up, but I missed the move. So just by, you know, the text or two pennies here. So. That's the way it goes. So um, let's take a look. Um, well, let's talk about a couple of the trades. Um, so we're on the road. So obviously the internet situation is not so good here. We have like two megabytes per second download yeah. and like 0.4 upload right now. And we've still been trading and doing our thing. I've been to Costa Rica before and it was like that before. But do you, uh, let me ask you, do you, do you like trading on the road or, road or do you find that you miss like your big setup and your desk and all that stuff? Uh, typically, um it's different now because I have a 4K monitor that I brought with me, this massive monitor that I had to bring out. Cam's around. got this, like, freaking massive <laughs> monitor that he brought in a suitcase over here. Yeah, I pretty much brought a full extra suitcase just for that monitor. So that's been uh, helping out big time. So I typically trade with six huge monitors running uh, 25, 60 by 1440 resolution. So in the past, I've just had my laptop on a 1080p you know, resolution. Yeah. Uh, and that makes it, it's really, you know, uh, disabling for me to go from six monitors down to just a laptop. I'm so used to having all these screens, all my charts, like you said, like, you know, you just have a watch list of all your tickers. My watch list is like 30 charts being displayed at the same time so I can see everything. <laughs> I'm a very visual trader, so I like to see uh, charts. Uh, this guy's got eyes like a hawk. He's got this like 4,000 thing resolution. And so his... He's got, he fits like a thousand things on his a screen. I can't see any of them. Like, I'm like, what are you looking at? And he's like, I'm like, I'm literally right in front I, of the I still have to look at it too. I'm like, sleeping. I can't even like, read the tickers yeah. because these high resolution monitors, I don't get it. If it's so high resolution, why can't you read it? They're so, they're so small. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really terrible. So look, I use old school stuff, man. It's like, I got like dot matrix yeah, monitors that here, so that I can actually, so I can actually monitor. see stuff because I'm freaking blind. And this guy's got eyes like a hawk. <laughs> so you miss your monitors. I personally trade better on the road um, than I do at home. And we did a study on this. Uh, uh, Tim Allen and Mary Beth are my business partners. And we always wondered how it happened because when I was in Costa Rica for three months, uh, two years ago, I, I had like one losing day in three months. And then I came home and like I fell apart. Yeah. And uh, last year we were on the road in California for three months. And then we went to Cabo for a few weeks, and I did not lose almost at all. That whole time, I was just on fire. And I literally had one 15-inch netbook laptop, a Samsung Series 9, and then I had an AOC USB monitor, and I was ripping it. And then I came home, and I was like, I was losing again. I had all these monitors yeah, sad, and my desktop and all this super speed. I, you know, the fastest Wi-Fi, and I just can't figure it out. And, and you know, we figured out what really what was going on is that Depending on your personality type, I'm an over trader. That's my personality type. So when I have access to so much information, um, it makes me over trade. When I keep things really, really simple where I just watch a few stocks because I'm on a laptop, I can only watch so many things. When I watch just a few stocks and I play them over and over and I hammer them out, 
I can make a lot of money because I'm just using a much more simplified method and I'm not trading like a thousand things like this week and we'll go into the trade. Like I traded CZR like five different times, but I nailed every single one. We didn't lose on any of them. I made three, 4,000 bucks just on um, that stock. And one of the reasons I so focus on that stock is that, you know, with the internet slow and me on a crappy laptop, I didn't have access to all my scans and stuff. So I could only really watch a few stocks. And so on the road, I trade better. And then the second thing is, I'm much more efficient with my day because I want to leave and go to the beach. Like we went ATV in, I've gone surfing and, you know, we've been exercising and doing all this stuff. We want to go out and, and meet some girls, you know, he is obsessed with women. So, <laughs> he, you know, that's, <laughs> that's the only thing on his mind, you know, and so we, I, I want to get done early and, so that makes me trade better. And I think the, that's important for you guys also is to really simplify your setup. Don't sit there in front of your computer all day. Don't watch a thousand things. Don't even think about running scans. Scans is meaningless. You know, you have your few plays that you know are good and, and, and you go for it. And if you can do that, then you're going to make some consistent money. And then as you make consistent money and you have profits, you can scale up and start adding more complicated stuff to your routine. But in the meantime, just do it like how I do it on the road. One computer, one monitor, just a really simple setup and focus on a few stocks that are really hot and then just hammer them because when you start running all of these, all of this stuff with the monitors and the scans, uh, your exposure to so much external stimuli uh, it, it, it's crazy and there's just so many variables that are in the market and so you don't want all that information. You just need just enough to make your move. I think that's uh, really, really important. Yeah, and that's, I do have, uh, you know, a lot of times better. <clears throat> so my swing trade usually gets better when I'm on vacation because I'm not watching stuff as much. Like last summer or last December, I was in Hawaii for Christmas and I should go in there again next month and I made about $12,000 uh, swing trade in there because one, I just you know, if you're sitting at your computer and you're staring at the stock, you're going to be you know, nicked by every, every little intraday move and you're going to freak out on some little dip and it'll come back up. When I was in Hawaii, the market opened, I think, at 4 30 in the morning, so I'd get up and I'd trade for about an hour. And there were, you know, it all really depends on if there's swing trading charts like mm -hmm. uh, patterns there, but there were. And uh, I'd only work from trade for about an hour and I'd actually go back to sleep, I just have like a hard stop set, uh, yeah below somewhere I'd go back to sleep and I'd wake up and the patterns were working out and I just wasn't sitting there uh, you know freaking out about intraday movement. If I'm actually sitting there all day long, I'm either tempted to overtrade or tempted to potentially stop out uh, when I don't actually give that pattern time to play out. Because you know my swing trading strategy, uh, it's I've obviously become much more of a day trader uh, yeah, in today's yeah, yeah. market because there's so much intraday volatility. Swing trading has become uh, Difficult to do, especially if you're sitting at your computer the whole time watching all of these intraday movements like HK, EXXI. I probably should still be long these. Right? There wasn't really any big reason for me to sell those. Yeah, they've never been at such a small range. Yeah, right so uh, <clears throat> if I could just leave, you know, uh, sometimes it's not actually sit there and stare at the computer. That's why it's good because we're on vacation, so we're also doing other things uh, and getting out of here. So. A lot of times vacations are when I make my best swing trades. So I'm not so focused yes. uh, in being obsessed about the intraday action. So uh, you know, Cameron, uh, we've for a long time specialized in like uh, smaller cap stocks, like two dollar, five dollar, ten dollar stuff. But those things are dead right now. So Completely dead. what's what's working in this market? Like where where's the money flowing? Where do you see the most action right now? Uh, I mean, it's been a lot of large cap plays. Like I've been playing. Uh, I typically don't play large caps at all, but I just ripped right before I left. I made seventy eight hundred dollars shorting dust, which is a gold triple times ETF. So I shorted, and I hardly ever short. Uh, but I did do a video lesson that's on uh, foodstores.com for my paying students. Uh, exactly why I got into that trade uh, and got after it's basically almost the same exact uh, strategy and pattern that I used to go long, but it was just an inverse pattern of doing that. So there has been a lot of money, especially if you can trade with size. Um, on these patterns that are, you know, $40 per share stock, yeah. 
if it rips one to two dollars, you know, that's a big move as opposed to trying to trade a stock that's at a dollar and you're just trying to take 10 cents mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, uh, 10%. And when you're trading in the hedge fund, you can trade with size. So you can actually, you know, make money off that dollar move as opposed to trying to scalp this little 10 cent move on a dollar stock. And there just really hasn't been that much movement lately uh, for the past three months or so in small caps. But the market's sure. been rip in the last month. And looking at these small cap plays, you're, they, you would not know that the market's been, you know, exploding. So <clears throat> it's been a lot of larger cap plays uh, that I think, you know, that has an opportunity to make money there. Uh, and there's just a lot of intraday volatility. I've played Baba several times. Uh, I've shorted that for 2000 That's a mover. That stock moves. Yeah, and it's a $100 per share stock. And a lot of people, you know, think, oh, it's $100. I can't trade that. Yeah, there's uh, there's intraday volatility that you can take advantage of. I mean, that. if I had a two three thousand uh, dollars account, I would rather still trade the hundred dollar stock that has like a ten dollar range, than try to trade a one dollar stock that has a ten cent range because you're only going to take so much out of that ten cents, and your timing would have to be like impeccable. But when you trade uh, a higher beta name or something with more volatility, um, especially if you have a smaller account. All you need is like a hundred shares, and you flip that bad boy around, and you can make some money. You know, you use you have to use access to a little bit of leverage or margin, but you can make money. You know, just trading really, really small amounts. You know, like if you see something like Baba's, you know, it'll be at like one ten, and it'll pop to one sixteen. Then it'll dump all the way back to one ten, and it'll pop to one fifteen. There's all this roller coaster in the intraday charts on it. And you know, as a trader, you can just if you can just capture chunks of it, a dollar or two dollars at a time. Uh, even though the percentage returns aren't big, uh, it'll add up to a lot bigger pro uh, profits than you know trying to find some two dollar stock uh, that's just going to be a monster move. I personally, you know, a few years ago only traded small cap stocks, uh, much like uh, I had a similar style to Cameron. I just got out of that game. You know, now I short those uh, bad boys uh, when they get really extended, but very rarely do I long them. You know, the money these days, it seems to be made in uh, momentum names like GoPro, uh, Baba, uh, MBLY, these IPO stocks, you know, for a while. There's always sector themes that are going on. Uh, I pay attention to sector themes a lot. Like if China stocks are going, then that's where I'm kind of flowing my money. If earnings plays are working, then that's where the money's flowing. If IPOs, like for a while this year, IPOs were just hot. Any They're stock, same Loco, GoPro, CYBR, go crazy. Yeah, I mean, you could just I go on the Nasdaq's website and just see what's IPO in that day. And I put it on my watch list, and uh, you know, I I'd use one minute charts or five minute charts and just look for the first opening range breakout pattern, and you would get like these just monster monster yeah, rips. Just, GoPro was just nonstop. That on. was the craziest IPO. I'd be trading that thing was insanity. I was flipping around like a thousand shares of it. And I literally, I went to go take a number two and I came back and the thing was down like a dollar eighty on yeah, there. Yeah. I lost so much money this last year from number two. From taking those deuces. Yeah. You know, you, you <laughs> deuce you lose. We have like rules in our chapter where everyone's always joking I was like, rule number three, no taking bathroom breaks and trading because that's just, you know, especially if you have an open position. I do it. I kind of, it's kind of funny. Uh, we call it a nap roll, uh, where I you know, typically that like it's kind of an inside joke in our chat room. It's like this boost is napping. This trade's gonna work out because every time I go take a nap and I have an open position as a swing, it always rips to the upside. So uh, for me, sometimes that helps out. Because I, like again, yeah. I'm not watching that injury action. I'm just letting that pattern play out without me. You know, distracted. Well, I mean, and nowadays there's no real, I mean, the old school chat rooms where you type in everything, I used to take my laptop into the bathroom with me yeah, all the yeah. time. But now I'm on video, I mean, I don't want to get arrested, <laughs> you know, for, I, 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 I would do it, but I, mean, I don't want to get in any trouble, so yeah, yeah. you can't take your laptop in with you, so you just have to eat it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, that's just the name of the game on it. So let me ask you this, um, you know, talking with Robert, you know, we were going talked a lot about like different businesses and students and stuff like that. I got a lot of emails um, before this webinar started um, from traders uh, that are struggling. You know, they've, they've blown up an account or two or uh, they just aren't getting their group. Uh, what do you suggest to somebody that's really had just a bad string 
of trading and luck. Like, how do you make that comeback? Because I think that comeback is what defines you as a trader. Because everybody goes through it in yeah, the beginning. It's, it's part of trading. I mean, so, you still go through it today. Yeah. You know, just going through uh, losing streaks, you definitely get beaten down bad. Like mentally, you're just in such a bad ride. You're like, nothing's working. You know, why is my strategy working anymore? Uh, and for me, you know, I get into these positions. I've, I've been in these positions so many times over the last ten years of trading that uh, it, it's you know. It's basically, I, I know my strategy works, but sometimes, like I tell most people, it's about November through March is when I typically probably make 80 to 90 percent of my money trading. So, so the rest of the year, you're just fucking miserable. I'm just grinding. <laughs> <laughs> I can't live like that, man. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a terrible yeah. person, man. Well, Losses make me a bad man. Well, see, the thing is, I, I, I'm not losing. Yeah, I'm just, just grinding. Not, I'm just fucking, you know, slow. 500 grinding. bucks here, 1,000 yeah. bucks here. So, like, you know, March of last year, or this year I made about $70,000, which is, you know, that's a big chunk of what I've made over this year. I probably have about 150 grand, but I also only trade a couple hours a day, so I really don't trade that much. Yeah, you're not like, like me. Yeah, see, you're I like trading. Leave. I'm like, <laughs> it's, I trade for about an hour, and then you know, I'm still grinding. I'm like, all right, man, I'm going for a run and working out, so I'm like going out and doing other stuff. Uh, and that's really, you know, kind of the what I sell is, you know, make a full-time living trading part-time because that's yeah. really all I do. I could really only trade for the first hour and still make six figures uh, sure. trading stocks. That's where this most volatile movement is. So um, what do you tell the guy that's blown up and he's down on his luck? What does he do? Where do you go with that? Uh, I, mean, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's everybody at some point is down on their luck. I mean, yeah. I mean everybody I mean, hits a rough patch. I think that's How just, do you get back? That's just part of being a trader. Is going through that process. Obviously, what I do and what you try to do, you know, we both went through that process. It took you know me about three and a half years before I ever started making money. Yeah. And what we both do at our websites is try to teach people the things that we went through and try to teach them how you know how important it is that there are rules to this game. And if you do break those rules, you'll be out and you'll lose everything extremely quickly. And it's it's that's not really something that's easy to teach someone. You know, you can tell somebody you know. These things about you know your past experiences and what you know you did wrong in the past, but yeah. until some somebody really goes through that experience themselves, they really a lot of times uh, can't do that. That's why there's a high turnover rate in trading because huge nobody, turnover, huge turnover. Nobody can uh, get that to this goal that there's you know if you break the rules or if you go over leverage on a play, you're not diversifying correctly. Uh, you know biggest thing. For that, I can probably say to anybody is if you are in a rough patch, walk away, stop trading, evaluate what your problem is, and look at why you're uh, you know losing. Either contact me if you're my student, or contact you. Say, hey, I'm not making money. You know, yeah, what am I doing wrong? Look at my trades, and basically just kind of analyze your situation rather than you know a lot of people like you were saying we're talking about people kind of go they hide, hide hide in the dark hole hide. because they're they're ashamed of losing. Uh, and they don't want to talk to anybody. And that's, you know, I go through that too. A lot of times if, if I'm losing money or I'm not trading well, I don't want to sit in my chat room and talk to people because I'm miserable to open yeah. up to people and be vulnerable uh, when you're losing. Everybody wants to talk when they're winning, right? But when you're losing, you want to go to the shell. But it should be the opposite, you know, is that when you're losing, that's the time to really reach out. So, like, what I would suggest, I got an email from Jimmy. I, I think he's probably in here. And that's why I wanted to talk about this. Yeah, because he says he's down on his luck, he's blown up his account, and like, what do you do? So, well, first things first, you stop trading, okay? You stop trading. Yeah, if you're losing, then there's no point of trading. You know, you've got to figure out what's going on. So you stop trading. You re-educate yourself in some manner, right? Go back to a very simple met methodology and... Start grinding on the education <laughs> portion of it and, and relearn some things and simplify your method. But then, and most importantly, you've got to do an evaluation of are you losing because your system or your method is actually not a profitable one or it doesn't give you the edge you need? You know, every method needs an edge, essentially, a definable, a quantifiable edge like how I am. Uh, with momentum stocks, or he is with this small cap stock. There's an edge in what we do, so you got to figure out if there is an edge. 
Uh, and is it just trading style that's wrong? But then the next thing is, if it's not that, like if you're one of my students, then you know the, me the method works, so where are you missing? So it's a, is, if it's a mental thing, then you know what's holding you back on the mental side? And that's really, really complicated because no teacher can come in and just fix your brain. But what you have to understand when you're trading is that you very rarely are trading stocks or setups. You know, once you know a flag pattern, you know a flag pattern. When you're trading, uh, you essentially, you know, the, Dr. Medica always talks to me about this. He said, you're not trading stocks or the market. You're trading your hopes and your dreams, your expectations. You know, if you need to make money or do this or you want to provide for your family, that's what you're trading against. And so reconciling that is really, really tricky. That takes a, a strong, strong person. Yeah. But um, – I had this problem, like I overtrade a lot. So when I was talking to Dr. Meneker, he's like, "Why are you doing this?" And I'm like, "Oh, you know, I need to make more money. I want to buy this. I want to get a Lamborghini. Like I had all this. I get the Lambo. I, you know, I had like I, I just uh, my mom wants a house. My dad wants to retire. My sister says she needs money for a condo. I mean, I got a big freaking family. There's a lot of mouths to feed. You know, I got 12 employees. Everybody needs bonuses." There's so much that goes on. I'm like, I got to make more money, so I'm trading a lot so I can make more. And he's like, but you know that trading more makes you lose. So why are you doing it? I'm like, well, I'm putting on more trades <laughs> to make more money, Doc, because more trades means more, more money. money because I'm good. And he's like, no, but every time you do it, you're losing. So like, why are look you? look at your analysis yeah. here and actually look at that. Why are you doing working? it? To make more money. And so I was in this endless spin cycle for a while. Uh, I was making good money, but I wasn't able to get to the level I wanted to. It was holding me back to over trading. And finally, after just going back and forth with Dr. Menneker, at one point he just sits, looks at me, and we do Skype call. We were doing Skype, so because he, he likes to look at me so he doesn't, so I don't lie to him. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, did you make any secret eye. trades? Did you make over trade today? Uh, no. You know, at some point when you have a relationship with somebody like a teacher, uh, it's like your dad, so you lie sometimes to get their approval, <laughs> even though you're paying him to help you. I mean, it was terrible. So he's like, I only want to video you from now on. I'm not going to do this over the phone so I can see if you're lying yeah. to me. And I'm like, Doc, I'm a great liar. You get it. <laughs> right on your face. Like, nope. So at some point he said, Canal, if you want to get to this next level, I believe you have the talent, you have the methodology, you know what you're doing. So at some point, if you want to get there, and our goal was I want to be a seven-figure trader at some point. I think it's really important for me to get there for my own self-validation um, as I identify myself uh, with the trader. But he says at some point if you want to get there and, and you keep doing this, you're not. So I said, well, we're going to go in endless circles. He's like, so he just looks at me and he goes, well, how bad do you want it? And I'm like, Pretty bad. Pretty bad. He's like, well, if you really want it, then you're not going to tra over trade anymore, are you? Yeah. I'm like, because <laughs> if you do, that means you don't want it. And it's yeah. like, you're, all you're right, right. you're right. Yourself. Because I know for a fact that when I do it, I'm going to lose, and yet I do it. So at some point, we all have to look at ourselves and just ask, like, how bad do you really want it? And I think that's really important because one of the things I learned about Cameron, so Cameron, over the trip, this is really the second time we've hung out. One of the things that Cameron, over the years, I followed him on social media, and it looks like he sleeps all day and he just hangs out with really pretty girls and talks about his car all the time. I had really no clue like what he does. And what I found out was that uh, living here with him is that Cameron's like the most disciplined person I've ever met in my life in that – like on the weekdays, he doesn't drink booze. Like I'll be boozing all the time. Like he never eats carbs. Like he's like really disciplined. Like we wake up right before the market goes, he goes for a run. Then he comes in the kitchen next to the computer and he bangs out like hundreds of push-ups. And he gets a pump going right before he wakes up. He eats the exact same thing like every day. Quest bar for breakfast, quest bar for lunch. And then when we go out, even to like really nice restaurants, I'm like, dessert steaks like ah wine and he gets freaking chicken with greens like everywhere we go he eats chicken with fucking greens it's disgusting <laughs> but like he's so disciplined I get tempted, but i try to do uh it's not easy it's and that's what shows yeah. up in his training is like you have to 
how you live as a person will also show up in your trading. And I had no clue, like he really, how hard he was working, because him and Robert have been—they work through the night till midnight every day. And I mean, and he's so disciplined. I mean, we see him go do yoga, then he goes and works out, and he eats the same thing. And it's like, holy crap! Like I'm like, I'm feeling like you know, like a fatty over here. I've eaten steak now. I've had five steaks in the last 48 hours. Yeah, like I just can't stop. I can't stop. We go to a nice restaurant. I order a steak and some wine. That's just what I do. He gets water. Chicken and veggies, and it's like, <laughs> come on. Lord. Yeah, I mean, it still tastes good, but it's definitely, uh, you know, it gets boring for sure, trying to keep it, maintain it. it. Really what throws you off is if you drink a lot. Sundays is always difficult. Today's Sunday, right? Today's, Today's Sunday. Sunday. I still stayed on point with it today. You though. did. He didn't drink all day, and then the webinars came, and he was a little bit nervous. He's like, <laughs> I and me, I'm game. always, you know, we do the webinars. I always have a few beers. It makes it fun. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the discipline really shows up in your training, though. So how important is that for the average person to come in? I mean, obviously, they can't be probably – nobody's going to be strict as you. But yeah, I mean, but it definitely – it triggers the mental. You know, I can teach anybody what I know yep. as far as uh, a strategy and technical analysis, technical analysis and – just chart pattern wise, anybody can learn that. I can show them my DVD, but uh, really what it comes down to is their discipline to actually follow that strategy and stick to it uh, and being able to manage the risk of any trade that they're in. You know, as always, I tell people losing money in the stock market is a choice. You know, anytime that stock goes against you, you have that opportunity yeah. to take a very small loss or be up to break even. The only reason why anybody will ever lose money in the stock market is because they go into losing position. And they allow that to happen and continue to drop or don't take a, uh, yeah. a small loss. So losing money in the stock market is a choice. It's not that the game's rigged. It's not that you know all these HFTs are completely screwing you over, even though there is manipulation. You still do have that opportunity to get out of that position for a very small loss uh, or break even. You know you choose to lose, uh, and you also have to choose to win as well. You choose to lose. You choose to lose. But it's also with. You know, taking profits is not easy as well. Buying a stock is the easiest thing in the world. You just buy it. I think so, too. Pattern, pattern. But selling is that's where you really start getting your mental disconnect of, you know, just should I sell here? You don't know. Nobody's psychic. Every, really I mean, every schmo profits. can draw a squiggly line on a chart and be like, that's a trend line or that's a flag. Everybody buys the same spot, essentially. Yeah. Right? What really separates you is going to be, how well do you hold on to the winners and then dump it if, you know, the setup is invalidated? So that's really true. So, uh, Cam, I'd like to show some people because let's talk about some of the, on the – let's do a screen share. Talk about some of, um, you know, the trades that we've been working on or doing this, um, you know, doing this – dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of these trades. And you go first. I gotta go pee here. You yeah. go pee, bro. You go pee. Let me uh, take the computer over here. Let's talk about some of the trades. A lot of people have asked me uh, about some of the trades. So let's talk about it. Um, you know, it's earnings season right now. So a couple things that I always do uh, during earnings season is uh, number one. Number one is uh, every morning I I run a scan right, for the earnings gappers. I think that's really, really important. So when I'm running these scans, hold on one second, let me turn my TC2000 on. When I'm running my uh, scans, you know, in the morning, I'm looking for a handful of things. Like people say, well, how do you choose which ones out of the gappers and stuff are working? So there's a few different tactics that I like to use. Uh, number one is... I look at the daily chart. What is the daily chart showing me? You know, if the daily chart is if the daily chart is in a breakout mode, okay, daily chart's in a breakout mode, then I want to be in that particular stock because the daily chart gives the most power and the most influence um, in your setup. And so always be looking at the daily chart. And that's where I get my first gauge of things. The second part is, well, what's the catalyst? Is it earnings, PR? Uh, earnings move can make a stock run for months. And so 
you know, I'm really, really interested in something like that. Like a stock blows out its earnings and it's got a great daily chart. That's a stock that could run for literally months. If you think about every big runner of the last so many years, they always start usually with an earnings breakout. So that's really, really important. And then the next part, and this is a little bit more subjective, and it also will take a little bit of practice because you're going to need to build some experience level, and that is understanding what has moved big in the past. You know, when you're choosing, I tend to gravitate towards stocks that I know have made big, big moves in the past because I know that that stock then has the potential to make the same type of move because it's done it before. Versus some stocks, they may show up on my earnings scanner, but it's never had a history of really making big, powerful moves. Well, I'll put it on my watch list, but I don't tier it. Like it's not on my focus, focus list. When I have my watch list, um, when I have my watch list, I have a, a, a three tier system, a tier one, tier two, tier three. So tier one is like stocks that are ready right now. Like they, they're ready right now. These are my go-to setups, my favorite setups. And I have to be in them at some point at the open. That is going to be huge. Then my tier two is like stocks that have great charts, but they need a little bit of work and they're not my go-to setup. Like they're not something that I historically just kill it on. And then on my tier three is like stocks that are just in play that we play, we've been playing every day, like uh, GoPro. So those are kind of the three tiers. Former runner, something that's moved in the past, always will go into a, a, a tier one. So if you're looking at like, you know, what we would be doing, dun, 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 sh, 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 sh. let me find out. Let me turn on my TC2000. Hold on one second, folks. Bum, 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 bum. Dun, dun, dun. Hold on. One second, folks. Let me get this thing fired up. TC2000 tends to take a lot of bandwidth. Dun, 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 dun. Man, it's hot as balls. <laughs> All right. So in Costa Rica, it's a, nobody really uses air conditioning. They just leave everything open. So we've got just a monster heat wave over here. Dun, 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 dun. Select a window to show in the video call. So I'm going to turn this thing up. Oh, one second, folks. I'm just loading this bad boy up. <laughs> Thanks, Saki Bomb. Whoa, 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 whoa. You are you're logged in. Hold on. Hey Robert, are you on the webinar? No. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Guys, uh, will you tell me if you can see TC two thousand? Hold on, let me make sure it turns on first. Oh, 
tan 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 Hold on, Mark. I'm going to it. You are screen sharing. The stock market watch.com is typically the one that I use. So, dun, 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, can you guys see my TC2000? Okay, you can see it. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, well, a couple things I do. Uh, number one, you know, you can use something like the stockmarketwatch.com. Um, that'll be, you know, a pretty good, that'll be a, a pretty good website for like a free website. So you can go on something like this and I'll start, I'll start digging into all these, like in the morning. See, all these stocks are making, you know, moves like pre-market. And so that'll give me kind of a rundown of what's having earnings and uh, things of that nature. So that's like my, you know, my favorite thing to do during earnings season as that's what's called stocks in play, you know, or stocks uh, or what we'd call like a PR earnings breakout. Now, once I have the list, you know, essentially I'm taking it and I'm adding them all into my TC2000. What's going on, Roberto? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're good. So once we got them, I'm adding them in. And once I narrow it down to a few, then it's just about really hammering in and catching the right setup. So something like CYBR. You know, CYBR was a, just a huge, huge earnings runner for us. So I, I like to keep my screen pre -mar like this, pre-market. So this is your daily chart, and then this is your five-minute chart intraday. And then, you know, this will, this will show um, the chart with pre-market data, you know, because of pre-market, you kind of want to see what's moving around. So, like, something like, damn, look at that CYBR. Really go. So this is, like, my favorite type of setup. You can see this stock when it finally had earnings, took out all of this range here. And so the stock has a pretty low float, tremendous volume, and this is what we call a breakaway gap. A breakaway gap is really the most powerful type of breakout setup um, that you'll find in the market. It is the most powerful, um, a breakaway gap on earnings. And so, you know, once that happens, you know, we're, we're, we're looking for, you know, basically any type of entry, you know? And so we like to use like opening range breakouts or a quick pullback buys or things of that nature. And so like, you'll see like on, you know, the day that CYBR came out, you know, you can't really chase this stock up because you don't know how to manage your risk. But when you get your first dip and you're starting to see some levels hold, well, that will give you a way to manage your risk. And, and participate in the play. And then from there, it's just a simple matter of, you know, playing all the different patterns. You know, you get a flag pattern, uh, so on and so forth, and you just catch the ring. You know, this would be, this pattern here would be like a day-long consolidation that'll break end of day, you know, things of that nature. And so this is a very, very powerful type of setup. So, you know, we were playing this, uh, you know, last week for a really good gains. And same thing with like something like, you know, CZR. So CZR has, you know, basically this kind of flag right here from 11 to 13. And it's just about utilizing your strategies at the open to get into it. So you can see like, you know, we added our first batch here in the 1320s, 1330s. So, you know, I had 2000 shares. The stock spikes up on some news, comes back, and, and we add in a position in anticipation of this breakout. And then we use this to kind of manage our risk. And then it's just about 
you know, as it's breaking out, we're taking our profits. And I usually like to keep a core position, maybe 500 shares, uh, and, and play for the home run. And so, you know, the stock had a really, really nice move, and then it just kind of faded off the next day. But because it was a, a PR earnings breakout, I don't take it off my list. I want to play it again if I can. And so you have to have it on your list. So the next day, when the stock opens up weak, and then it goes red to green, and it takes out this previous day's high, because this is a momentum name, that can be a trigger for another run. So we added a couple thousand shares uh, at 1420. And you can see what happened because of the, the way the, the volume is coming in on the stock and the way it's float is, um, it can spike literally matters of dollars, you know, in minutes. And so, you know, we were selling off into these spikes and took some off into the 16s and so on and so forth. And uh, lo and behold, it comes back and it just consolidates all day here. See that? Uh, when you have a really big momentum stock that makes a powerful move like this, when you get a tight consolidation like this that's so narrow, what that is is it's building up energy. It's building up energy to explode. It's the, the calm before the storm, essentially. And so when you see a momentum stock and its range really tightens up, right, it's just tightening, tightening up. That is a powerful indicator to tell you that an explosive potential move is coming out of that stock. And so as this stock is tightening up like this, you know, we add back our shares with the stop under the support right here. And for a stop, what I mean is that stop is a stop loss, so how we measure um, our risk on the trade. So we add it in here with the stop loss right under. And then we get to play this end of day um, ripper, you know, this end of day ripper. And I think that that's really, really a, a powerful setup and something that, you know, a lot of people don't utilize. See, the thing is, when you're, when you're trading, you know, when you're trading, hey, can, you, can you send me that link, Robert? I never got it. Oh, actually, I got it in my email. Hold on. Um, when you're trading, there are technical setups, and then there are momentum setups. And momentum setups, you know, we use technical analysis, but we use some type of catalyst to really, really get it going. And so then you're marrying the fundamentals with the technicals, and now you've got really the best of all worlds. And I think that that is just a, a monster, monster thing and something that you guys can utilize every day. See, if you look at those patterns, they're not complicated. They're not complicated. The key is having a methodology so that you know what to do. See, when you're new, you don't know where to do go or what to start or anything like that, and so you're lost, and you're getting hit with so many variables during the day, um, and so when you have to start thinking about what you're going to do, that's when you lose. Everything has to be automatic. And so you need to have a rock solid routine. So like for me, I get up, I do the same things. I'll go on the stock market watch, the trade ideas. I'll be looking at the earnings plays and I'll have a very exact methodology and routine on how I rate them and how I manage them and how I put them on my list so that when the lights are on, Right when the lights are on and it's 9:30 and it's game time, there's no thinking in it for me. I am just like a robot, just going. I'm just going, and I talk about this all the time. Uh, this big man over here, uh, he's Robert. That's Cameron Foose's um, right hand man. He is Roberto. 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 He's the man behind the man. And Roberto has like um, Roberto has stage fright essentially. You know, he's the type of guy. If you're in the urinal, he kind of hides. He's got a lot of stage fright, and it shows up. Um, it shows up in his trading. So he asked me. He goes, "Canal, sometimes I have trouble trigger, and and then he's like, "What do I do?" And I told him. What I say? No balls, no profits. <laughs> no balls, no babies. 
But no, what I told him was um, grip it and rip it. Grip it and rip it. And what I mean by grip it and rip it is that that's how I trade because I don't, I'm not thinking about, oh my God, am I going to make money on this? Am I going to do this? Is it going to work out? Uh, I'm not thinking like that. I know that the method works. I know that the patterns work. I know that if I do everything right, then it's just a numbers game. Whether the trade works out or not has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just a guy wearing really ridiculous tank tops for being 30 <laughs> years old um, <laughs> and sitting at a computer all day with my friends. Like there's nothing, I don't control anything. And so as long as you know it works and – you minimize your risk, then in the end, it's just about grip it and rip, rip it. it. But one of the things that Robert was asking me, so how do you build that confidence? Well, you build the confidence from competence. It's by having an exact system, a methodology of what you're gonna do every step of the way so that you do it without thought. And then when it's time, it's like, you're ready to roll. And I think that that's uh, really, really important and something that – I mean, how long have you been trading, Robert? Uh, almost five years. So he's at five years. He's getting in a lot of repetition. How many trades a week do you make? Ooh, probably, probably about uh, 25. 30. 25 trades. So uh, if you guys have ever read like uh, Michael uh, Malcolm uh, Gladwell's books, uh, Outliers, right, they say – it takes 10,000 10, hours of deliberate practice before you really become an expert on things. And so what he was saying was when they did the studies of like Bill Gates or Mozart or all these different people, they weren't born like geniuses of that particular um, realm of wherever they conquered. It's that they had literally access and deliberate practice that they did over and over and they built themselves into you know whatever they're going to do trading is very similar you need thousands of repetitions to get good and build that competence level and then you, you start to build your market intuition and things like that now well how do you get thousands of repetitions without just losing everything well that's part of you've got to study you know you take your courses or whatever you're doing and then like in our boot camp, we put all the students on simulators. You know, we put the students on the simulators and they post their trades. They post their trades and, you know, we grade them and we look at them and they grade each other's trades most of the time. And all of that is what? That's deliberate practice. See, it's not just practice. It is a deliberate practice with a very, very specific goal in mind. And that's what happens when you simulate then you post your trades, then somebody's got to grade them or look at them, and you also spend time grading other people's trades. That is also what? Deliberate practice. You're getting more and more repetitions. And so you can add in a lot of repetitions on the slide uh, with the simulator and grading trades and things like that. But then when you go live, you know, you'll, your strategy will be good. Then it's just about conquering the mental side of things. And that is something that is awesome. That's the thing I love about trading is that at the end, once you go live, you should already have your strategy and all that stuff. And so then it just becomes about whether you can conquer your own brain, which is awesome because that means you're in total control of how much money you make and whether you're going to be successful or not because trading is really uh, – so much mental and that's what I want when I want my, when I have a job or a career or something I'm trying to do I want it on me I want to be responsible for my results not my boss or my friends or the market or the economy all of that stuff doesn't matter and that's what will happen when you guys are new you'll have a strategy you'll have it practice then it's just about conquering the next level which is you know your fears and greeds and the mental side of trading but the beauty is it's on you because it's all in your head. And that's when you can really, really, uh, you know, make your goals. Because the thing is, like, I, I went through so much pain to, like, kind of get to this point. But it was all worth it.
right? It was all worth it. Like I'm doing everything I want. I mean, I'm 33 years old. I dress like a kid. Like when I was 23, I had to wear suits every day uh, to work. And now I dress like I'm a 20 year old instead, right? I, I fully reversed my life. Um, so it's worth it. But I would have done it a lot different if I had to do it again, which is I would have practiced, I would have simulated, I would have really worked on the deliberate practice and building a methodology um, rather than just jumping in and trying a million trades all at once. Uh, I think that that's going to be just really, really huge. And you know, now I've taught tens of thousands of students. So it's like, not only have I become an expert on trading, but I, I, now I'm noticing and, and understanding how to develop skill in people, um, which is really, really important, the way to teach people, the way to present information and things like that. Um, that's going to be huge. And that's my next you know, project and where I, I want to take myself is like, I know I'm a really, really good trader, but I want to be an elite teacher. Like I think I'm an elite teacher in terms of running cool webinars, but really understanding how to build traders from the ground up. Um, and what the research that I've done is uh, building a trader is no different than building an Olympic athlete. You know, it is literally this, you build somebody up the same exact way that, you know, an Olympian would do it. You have to have an elite coach. You have to have an elite program for your mind and your body and your spirit, but also the technical aspects of your what you're trying to do whether it's a shot put or a javelin right there's the technical aspects your form and things of that nature so you have to have elite coaching on um, all of those things and together and right a symbiotic relationship you build yourself up and, and i'm noticing that trading is very very similar you build a trader just the same way as you would an athlete and uh, so uh, think about that when you guys are going through your days and stuff like that Monitor like how much you sleep, what you eat, like all of these things will come into play, um, and they will literally affect you. Uh, you know your decisions and stuff like that. Like I know if I don't eat in the morning, um, and my stomach is like I'm like growling and stuff when I get to my trading desk, I always make like some really hasty trading decisions. I don't know why. I think it's just I'm hungry. I get a little lightheaded, whatever, and I always blow up a couple trades. Like I have to have, I got to eat some meats. You know, I got to eat some meats in the morning. Otherwise, you know, Big Daddy doesn't make any good trades. <laughs> what about you? What's your kind of morning routine, Cam Cam? Morning routine is typically wake up, drink a cup of coffee right before the market open. Uh, and I don't eat before the market open because I got to get up so early. And I get up about 545, 6 o'clock, market open to 630. Uh, so typically I just have a cup of coffee, trade for about an hour or two, then I'll go for a run down to the coffee shop, get my Quest Bar, another coffee, and then run back. And sometimes I'll do like a little breakfast bowl that they have there. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Wake up, drink coffee, and I'll trade for about an hour or two, and then I'll go get something to eat. For those of you guys that don't, that live on the West Coast, it sounds great in theory. You know, you trade, and then you're done at 1 p.m., you can like hang out and do stuff all day. Um, it don't work like that. West Coast trading is miserable. It's rough. It's rough because, I mean, I like waking up that early. I'm okay with that, but I don't like functioning that early. Like my brain yeah. doesn't function that early. Like I wake up that early every day. We've been waking up here uh, in Costa Rica at 530 every day because the sun's out here, but I hate being having to function. Like I need that two hours to get going. I'm really creative in the morning, so I like to get all my work done and all that stuff. Um, for those of you guys that know, Sham is uh, posting his watch list. He's a really sharp uh, young trader. One of my most promising students. Uh, he's a really, really good kid. Um, so, you know, check out his watch list and stuff like that. Um, I think that, you know, some of these guys, man, they're just really, really um, smart kids. I'll tell you what. Uh -huh. uh, let's answer some questions here, and uh, we'll get this thing moving. Hold on, let me grab my. I'm going to just send this. Hold on one second, guy. Fusely got. Hold on one second, folks. Oops.
Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's open this thing up to some questions and uh, get this pate moving. All right. Um, and, guys, uh, you know, I can't scroll through the chat area, um, but there is a Q&A box where you can type in the questions. So uh, if you have anything specific, I, the chat won't let me scroll up beyond the last, like, uh, you know, 20 or 30 messages. Uh, Phillips says, why are you and Cam dressed alike? <laughs> uh, we didn't plan it. Uh, we just happen to actually be a lot alike. But he is, Cameron is California bro. He's a California bro. When you call Cam, it's like, hey, bro. Like, he's a California bro. Um, and I lived in Michigan my whole life. In the, in the snow, and so then when I moved to Florida, I just made the decision that wherever I go, I'm going to wear tank tops. And so it happens to be now we have um, – now we have um, similar looks. Uh, Alex, uh, how can I use the click fund through the Faust alerts? Um, just go on – Alex, just go on Faust's uh, page. He's got an – hold on. Okay, it's back. What just happened? Shit. Okay. Shit. Dun, 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 dun. Webinar or webinar.com. 